Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Patrick here at VectorVest, and today I've got a brand new update for you guys. We're gonna be taking a look at the major indices utilizing their counterparts. So we're gonna be looking at the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, and the Russell, and taking a technical look at them and seeing what their charts are showing us. As the old saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words, and the graph is like a big picture of the stock. So if you're ready to see what they're telling us, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, so that way you get updated and alerts every time we have new content for you, which is about daily, and let's get into it here. All right, welcome back. So as always, let's get started by taking a look at the Russell. As I've talked about many times over the last couple of months, when we're looking for that one chart pattern you need to be aware of, we know that the Russell is more of a forward looking index. So that's where we're gonna start here today. So looking at the chart right now, here's that head and shoulders we were talking about. And then the head and shoulders never got a breakout either below the neckline or above the shoulder line. So we really started seeing it more of a sideways channel, more so than that head and shoulders pattern. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, we did break out to the upside of that shoulder line, giving us a positive run. We came tumbling back down, came back within that channel. And then over the last week or so, we've been breaking out once again, trying to get out of that consolidation there. Well, we're pulling back here today, coming back. So at least we want to see a retest of that 227 level to see if we can bounce off of that and hold strong and move higher. If we can't hold that 227 level, that definitely tells us that investor sentiment is bearish at where we're currently at in the market. If we can't hold that level, that tells us that prices don't look as attractive as one may think and that we may see further down pressure coming ahead. So that's really what we just see with the basic price action. Yesterday we had a doji or Friday we had a doji and then getting some downward pressure here today. So follow through here. Well, what does our technical analysis below that tell you? Well, below that price pattern up there at the top, we have the DPO or the detrended price oscillator. This is a great technical indicator that utilizes or looks at the momentum of the stock. And then below that, we have the stochastic oscillator, which shows great overbought and oversold scenarios. Now, I will preface this before we even jump into it. When looking at the stochastics, we do see that whenever they go above the level of 80, they can stay there for some time. So just because they're in that overbought territory or above the level of 80 doesn't mean it's a bad thing, just means you need to be a little bit more cautious. Same as when it goes to oversold territory. All right, so we see here, stochastics is getting towards that upper echelon or that overbought territory. But really, the one thing that stands out the most is looking at the momentum indicator of the DPO here over the last couple of weeks. Over the last couple of weeks, we have seen lower highs and lower lows forming with the DPO, and price has essentially been hitting a double top or about the same high. So what we see here is what they like to call or what the market calls a bearish divergence, simply suggesting that downside risk may outweigh upside potential currently. Or from a technical standpoint, even though price was able to get back to those previous highs, it was doing so on less momentum. So momentum is waning currently to the upside, which is something you need to be very careful with going forward. Next one we want to take a look at is the S&P 500 or SPY for the ETF. So if we go pull that up, looking at the S&P 500, the chart looks phenomenal. We've had a phenomenal uptrend over the last six months, consistently hitting higher highs and higher lows. From the most basic definition, putting us in an uptrend here. But let's go ahead and take a look at the technical aspect of it. So right now we just hit a new high here in the S&P, but looking at the DPO, once again, that momentum indicator, we see lower highs and lower lows. So even though the S&P has been climbing and hitting new highs, and if you're watching all the news channels out there, they're touting about how this index or that indice is hitting a new high. Well, yes, that is true. But at the same time, momentum is waning. We're seeing less and less pressure pushing us higher as we consistently hit these new highs. So as an individual retail investor, this is something that you need to be aware of and be mindful of going forward because you don't want to be the one left holding the bag. 
And why we're looking at the S&P, I know the SPY is one of the biggest ETFs out there. Let me ask you a question. Do you trade any of the ETFs on the major indices? If so, which one is your favorite? What type of trades do you do? You know, is it an options trade? Are you looking for credit spreads on the indices? What exactly is it that you do utilizing these indices? And what makes you so attracted to that specific ETF? I'd love to hear your comments or your thoughts down below. All right, so we see the same kind of situation that we had with the uh, IWM or the Russell. We had price moving higher, but at the same time, momentum is waning. Once again, setting us up for that bearish divergence. Let's go take a look at the other two major indices, starting off with the QQQ or the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has had a phenomenal run here off of those lows right around the middle of uh, May. And we've seen nothing but just straight up essentially. Some would say that kind of move is unsustainable. Also, looking at our charts, we can see the same type of pattern forming once again. For anybody new to technical analysis, let me go ahead and use some colorful lines to help you envision what we're seeing here so you can see this going forward and help you start to identify these patterns for your own self and your own investing. So I have the freehand line set up and I'm just going to connect these tops here. As we can see, no doubt price is hitting higher highs, moving higher. Well, let's go ahead and connect that same time frame here with the DPO or that momentum indicator. We can clearly see moving lower. So this shows us this push higher to this new high here today is actually on less momentum, giving us a worrisome sign and telling us we need to be careful going forward. So far, three out of the four major indices that we've looked at have all been exhibiting this bearish divergence and suggesting that downside risk outweighs upside potential. Also looking at the stochastics, we can see that they have been overbought for quite some time. And as I said previously, just because they're overbought doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means that you need to be a little bit more cautious and pay closer attention on a daily basis. They can stay in overbought territory for as long as they want. And it's not until that the stochastics breaks down below that level of overbought or below that level of 80 that you really want to start to consider taking action. So just be aware of that as you move forward, especially if you're trading the NASDAQ. And last but not least, let's go ahead and take a look at DIA to look at the Dow Jones. So we'll go ahead and click on DIA at the top. And looking at the Dow, it looks a little bit different than what we've seen with the other three major indices. For example, the bearish divergence that we noticed with the Dow happened a little bit earlier. To highlight that, once again, I'll go ahead and use the freehand line for you guys out there. And I'll connect these highs here, but also connect the highs with the DPO over the same time frame. So here we can see price clearly going higher, but looking at the DPO, we can see it's clearly moving lower. Setting us up for that bearish divergence we just noticed with the other three major indices currently. Well, that bearish divergence seems to have started taking effect, and we're now noticing the Dow hitting a pattern of lower highs here and also lower lows. By the basic definition, putting us in a downtrend on the Dow. So while we were looking at the Russell being that leading indice, maybe we should be focusing more on the Dow. Could the Dow carry the other major indices with it? Or is this just taking a little bit of a breather and maybe picking up soon to catch back up later on? Who knows? Only time will tell on that one. But for now, we see the reason why we follow technical analysis because this bearish divergence we're noticing with the Dow has already started taking shape and we're noticing that downtrend now starting to come in. And we don't want to see that happen with the other major indices because that could lead to the overall broad market moving lower. So hopefully today's video helped you guys understand what's going on with the market, get a better idea for the overall sense of the market right now, where we're currently at and helping you adjust your trading plan accordingly. If you want to keep up with this market analysis on a nightly basis, click on the link in the description of today's video. Sign up for the free trial where you can get a nightly update about 5 to 10 minutes long Monday through Thursday and about 10 minutes to 20 minutes long on Fridays where we break down what's going on in the market today, what to expect for tomorrow, what headlines you need to be aware of, and how to prepare yourself going forward. In essence, we do all this analysis every single night for you to make sure that you never get caught off guard with what's going on in the market and that you stay ahead of the market as well. 
So until next time, take care. Adios. Toodles. Yeah.